Chapter 5 Principles of Inheritance and Variation Have you ever wondered why an elephant always gives birth to only to a baby elephant and not some other animal? Or why a mango seed forms only a mango plant and not any other plant? Given that they do, are the offspring identical to their parents or do they show differences in some of their characteristics? Have you ever wondered why siblings sometimes look so similar to each other or sometimes even so different? These and several related questions are dealt with scientifically in a branch of biology known as genetics. This subject deals with the inheritance as well as the variation of characters from parents to offspring. Inheritance is the process by which characters are passed on from parents to progeny. It is the basis of heredity. Variation is the degree by which progeny differ, differ from their parents. Humans knew from as early as 8000 to 1000 BC that one of the cause of variation was hidden in sexual reproduction. They exploited the variations that were naturally present in the wild population of plants and animals to selectively breed and select for organisms that possessed desirable characters, for example, through artificial selection and domestication from ancestral wild cows. We have well-known Indian breeds, example, Sahiwal cows in Punjab. We must, however, recognize that though our ancestors knew about the inheritance of characters and variation, they had very little idea about the scientific basis of these phenomena. 5.1 Mendel's Law of Inheritance It was during the mid-19th century that headway was made in the understanding of inheritance. Gregor Mendel conducted hybridization experiments on garden peas for seven years, 1856 to 1863, and proposed the laws of inheritance in living organisms. During Mendel's investigation into the inheritance patterns, it was for the first time that statical analysis and mathematical logic were applied to problems in biology. His experiments had a large sampling size, which gave greater credibility to the data that he collected. Also, the confirmation of his interference from also, the confirmation of his inferences from experiments on successive generations of his test plants provided that his results pointed to general rules of inheritance rather than being unsubstantiated ideas. Mendel investigated character in the garden pea plant that were manifested as two opposing traits, example tall or dwarf plants, yellow or green seeds. This allowed him to set up a basic framework of rules governing inheritance which was expanded on by letter scientists to account for all the diverse natural observations and the complexity inherent in them. Mendel conducted such artificial pollinations or cross-pollination experiments using several true breeding P lines. A true breeding line is one that having undergone continuous self-pollination shows the stable trait, inheritance and expression for several generations. Mendel selected 14 true breeding P plant varieties as pairs which were similar expect for one character with contrasting traits. Some of the contrasting traits selected were smooth or wrinkled seeds, yellow or green seeds, inflated, full or constricted green or yellow pots, and tall or dwarf plants, which is given in figure 5.1 and table 5.1. 5.2 Inheritance of 1 gene let us take the example of one such hybridization experiment carried out by Mendel where he crossed tall and dwarf pea plants to study the inheritance of one gene which is given in figure 5.2. He collected the sets produced as a result of this cross and grew them to generate plants of the first hybrid generation. This generation is also called the filial 1 progeny or the F1. Mendel observed that all the F1 progeny plants were tall, like one of its parents, none were dwarf, which is given in figure 5.3. He made similar observations for the other pairs of traits. He found out that the F1 always resembled either one of the parents and that the trait of the other parent was not seen in them. Mendel then self-pollinated the tall F1 plants and to his surprise found that in the filial 2 generation, some of the offspring were dwarf. The character that was not seen in the F1 generation was now expressed. The proportion of plants that were dwarf were 1 by 4th of the F2 plants were 3 by 4th of the F2 plants were tall. The tall and dwarf traits were identical to their parental type and did not show any blending. That is, all the offspring were either tall or dwarf. None were of in-between height, which is given in figure 5.3. Similar results were obtained with the other traits that he studied. Only one of the parental trait was expressed in the F1 generation, while the F2 stage, both the traits were expressed in the proportion 3 is to 1. 
The contrasting traits did not show any blending at either F1 or F2 stage. Based on these observations, Mendel proposed that something was being steadily passed down, unchanged from parent to offspring, through the gametes over successive generations. He called these things as factors. Now we call these as genes. Genes, therefore, are the units of inheritance. They contain the information that is required to express a particular trait in an organism. Genes which code for a pair of contrasting traits are known as alleles. That is, they are slightly different forms of the same gene. If we use alphabetical symbols for each gene, then the capital letter is used for the trait expressed at the F1 stage and the small alphabet for the other trait. For example, in case of character of height, capital T is used for the tall trait and small t for the dwarf and capital T and small t are alleles of each other. Hence, in plants, the pair of alleles for height would be capital T, capital T, capital T, small t or small t, small t. Mendel also proposed that in a true breeding tall or dwarf pea variety, the allelic pair of genes for height are identical or homozygous, capital T, capital T and small t, small t respectively. Capital T, capital T and small t, small t are called the genotype of the plant while the descriptive terms tall and dwarf are the phenotype. What then would be the phenotype of a plant that had a genotype capital T, small t? As Mendel found the phenotype of the F1 heterozygote, capital T small t, to be exactly like the capital T capital T parent in appearance, he proposed that in a pair of dissimilar factors, one dominates the other as in the F1 and hence is called the dominant factor, while the other factor is recessive. In this case, capital T for tallness is dominant over small t for dwarfness, that is recessive. He observed identical behavior for all the other characters or trait pairs that he studied. It is convenient and logical to use the capital and lower case of an alphabetical symbol to remember this concept of dominance and recessiveness. Do not use capital T for tall and small d for dwarf because you will find it difficult to remember whether capital T and small d are alleles of the same gene or character or not. Alleles can be similar as in the case of homozygotes capital T, capital T, and small t, small t, or can be dissimilar as in the case of heterozygote, capital T, small t. Since the capital T, small t plant is heterozygous for genes controlling one character, which is height, it is a monohybrid, and the cross between capital T, capital T, and small t, small t is a monohybrid cross. From the observation that the recessive parental trait is expressed without any blending in the F2 generation, we can infer that when the tall and dwarf plant produce gametes by the process of meiosis, the alleles of the parental pair separate or segregate from each other and only one allele is transmitted to a gamete. This segregation of alleles is a random process and so there is a 50% chance of a gamete containing either allele as has been verified by the result of the crossing. In this way, the gametes of the tall capital T capital T plants have the allele capital T and the gametes of the dwarf small t small t plants have the allele small t. During fertilization, the two alleles capital T from one parent say through the pollen and small t from the other parent then through the egg are un un united. Are united to produce zygotes that have one capital T allele and one small t allele. In other words, the hybrids have capital T small t. Since these hybrids contain alleles which express contrasting traits, the plants are heterozygous. The production of gametes by the parents, the formation of the zygotes, the F1 and F2 plants can be understood from a diagram called Punnett square as shown in the figure 5.4. It was developed by a British geneticist, Reginald C. Punnett, it is a graphical representation to calculate the probability of all possible genotypes of offspring in a genetic cross. The possible gametes are written on two sides, usually the top row and left columns. All possible combinations are represented in boxes below in the squares, which generate a square output form. The Punnett square shows the parental tall capital T capital T male and dwarf small t small t female plants. The gametes produced by them and the F1 capital T small t progeny, the F1 plant of genotype capital T small t are self-pollinated. The symbols capital T and small t are used to denote the female, X and male pollen of the F1 generation respectively. The F1 plant of the genotype capital T small t when self-pollinated produces gametes of the genotype capital T and small t in equal proportion. When fertilization takes place, 
द पॉलिन ब्रेन ऑफ जीनो टाइप कैपिटल टी हैव अ फिफ्टी परसेंट चांस टू पॉलिनेट एग्स ऑफ द जीनो टाइप कैपिटल टी एज वेल एज ऑफ जीनो टाइप स्मॉल टी ऑल्सो पॉलिन ग्रेन ऑफ जीनो टाइप स्मॉल टी हैव अ फिफ्टी परसेंट चांस ऑफ पॉलिनेटिंग एग्स ऑफ जीनो टाइप कैपिटल टी एज वेल एज ऑफ जीनो टाइप स्मॉल टी एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ रैंडम फर्टिलाइजेशन द रिजल्टेंट साइकोट्स कैन बी ऑफ द जीनो टाइप्स कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी और स्मॉल टी स्मॉल टी फ्रॉम द पुनेट स्क्वायर इट इज ईजली सिन दैट वन बाय फोर्थ ऑफ द रैंडम फर्टिलाइजेशन लीड टू कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी वन बाय टू लीड टू कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी एंड वन बाय फोर टू स्मॉल टी स्मॉल टी दो द एफ वन हैव अ जीनो टाइप ऑफ कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी बट द फिनोटिपिक कैरेक्टर सीन इज टॉल एट एफ टू थ्री बाय फोर्थ ऑफ द प्लान्स आर टॉल वे आर सम ऑफ दैम आर कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी वाइल द अदर्स आर कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी एक्सटर्नली इट इज़ नॉट पॉसिबल टू डिस्टिंग बिटवीन द प्लान्स विथ द जीनो टाइप्स कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी एंड कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी हेंस विद इन द जीनोटिपिक पेयर कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी ओनली वन कैरेक्टर कैपिटल टी टॉल इज एक्सप्रेस हेंस द कैरेक्टर कैपिटल टी और टॉल इज सेट टू बी डोमिनेट ओवर द अदर अली स्मॉल टी और डॉर्फ कैरेक्टर इट इज दस ड्यू टू दिस डोमिनेंस ऑफ वन कैरेक्टर ओवर द अदर दैट ऑल द एफ वन आर टॉल दो द जीनो टाइप इज कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी एंड इन द एफ टू थ्री बाय फोर्थ ऑफ द प्लान आर टॉल दो जीनोटिपिकली वन बाय टू आर कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी एंड ओनली वन बाय फोर्थ आर कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी दिस लीड्स टू अ फिनोटिपिक रेशियो ऑफ थ्री बाय फोर्थ टॉल विच इज वन बाय फोर्थ कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी प्लस वन बाय टू कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी एंड वन बाय फोर्थ स्मॉल टी स्मॉल टी दैट इज अ थ्री इज टू वन रेशियो बट अ जीनोटिपिक रेशियो ऑफ वन इज टू टू इज टू वन The one by fourth is to one by two is to one by fourth ratio of capital T capital T is to capital T small t is to small t small t is mathematically consid condensable to the form of binomial expression, which is a x plus b y whole square that has the gametes bearing genes capital T or small t in equal frequencies of half. The expression is expanded as given below, one by two capital T plus one by two. small t whole square equals to 1 by 2 capital t plus 1 by 2 small t into 1 by 2 capital t plus 1 by 2 small t equals to 1 by 4 capital t capital t plus 1 by 2 capital t small t plus 1 by 4 small t small t mendel cell pollinated the f2 plants and found that dwarf f2 plants continue to generate dwarf plants in f3 and f4 generations He concluded that the genotype of the dwarf was homozygous cap a small t small t. What do you think he would have caught had he self pollinated a tall f two plant? From the preceding paragraph, it is clear that though the genotypic ratio can be calculated using mathematical probability by simply looking at the phenotype of a dominant trait, it is not possible to know the genotypic composition. That is, for example, whether a tall plant from f one or f two has capital T capital T or capital T small t composition. cannot be predicted therefore to determine the genotype of a tall plant at f2 mendel crossed the tall plant from f2 with a dwarf plant this he called a test cross in a typical test cross an organism which is a p plants here showing a dominant phenotype and whose genotype is to be determined is crossed with the recessive parent instead of self crossing the progenies of such a cross can easily be analyzed to predict the genotype of the test organism Figure five point five shows the result of typical test cross where violet color flower capital W is dominant over white color flower small W. Using Punnett square, try to find out the nature of offspring of a test cross. What ratio did you get? Using the genotypes of this cross, can you give a general definition for a test cross? Based on his observations on monohybrid crosses, Mendel proposed two general rules to consolidate his understanding of inheritance in monohybrid crosses. Today, these rules are called the principles or laws of inheritance. The first law or law of dominance, and the second law or law of segregation. Five point two point one law of dominance. First, characters are uh, controlled by discrete unit called factors. Second, factors occur in pairs. Third, in a dissimilar pair of factors, one member of the pair. dominates which is dominant the other which is recessive the law of dominance is used to explain the expression of only one of the parental characters in a monohybrid cross in the f1 and the expression of both in the f2 it is also explains the proportion of 3 to 1 obtained at the f2 5.2.2 law of segregation this law is based on the fact that the alleles do not show any blending and that both the characters are recovered as such in the f2 generation 
दो वन ऑफ दीज इज नॉट सीन एट द एफ वन स्टेज दो द पेरेंट्स कंटेन टू अलीज ड्यूरिंग गेमेट फॉर्मेशन द फैक्टर्स और अलीज ऑफ अ पेयर सेग्रीगेट फ्राम इच अदर सच दैट अ गेमेट रिसीव ओनली वन ऑफ द टू फैक्टर्स of course a homozygous parent produces all gametes that are similar while a heterozygous one produces two kinds of gametes each having one allele with equal proportion 5.2.2.1 incomplete dominance when experiments on peas were repeated using other traits in other plants it was found that sometimes the f1 had a phenotype that did not resemble either of the two parents and was in between the two The inheritance of flower color in the dog flower snapdragon or anthrena sp is a good example to understand incomplete dominance. In a cross between true breeding red flower capital R capital R and true breeding white flower plants small r small r the f1 capital R small r was pink which is given in figure 5.6. When the f1 was self pollinated the f2 results in the following ratio 1 capital R capital R red is to 2 capital r small r pink is to 1 small r small r white here the genotype ratios were exactly as we would expect in any mendelian monohybrid cross but the phenotype ratio had changed from the 3 is to 1 dominant is to recessive ratio what happened was that capital r was not completely dominant over small r and this made it possible to distinguish capital r small r as pink from capital r capital r red and small r small r white explanation of the concept of dominance what exactly is dominance why are some alleles dominant and some recessive to tackle these questions we must understand what a gene does every gene as you know by now contains the information to express a particular trait in a diploid organism there are two copies of a gene that is as a pair of alleles now these two alleles need not always be identical as in a heterozygote one of them may be different due to some changes that it has undergone about which you will read further on and in the next chapter which modifies the information that particular allele contains let's take an example of a gene that contains the information for producing an enzyme now there are two copies of this gene the two allelic forms let us assume as is more common that the normal allele produces the normal enzyme that is needed for the transformation of a substrate as theoretically the modified allele could be responsible for production of first the normal or less efficient enzyme or second a non functional enzyme or third no enzyme at all in the first case the modified allele is equivalent to the unmodified allele that is it will produce the same phenotype or trait that is result in the transformation of substrate as such equivalent allele pairs are very common but if the allele produces a non functional enzyme or no enzyme the phenotype may be affected the phenotype or trait will only be dependent on the functioning of the unmodified allele the unmodified which is functioning allele which represents the original phenotype is the dominant allele and the modified allele is generally the recessive allele hence in the example above the recessive trait is seen due to non functional enzyme or because no enzyme is produced 5.2.2.2 codominance till now we were discussing crosses where the f1 resembled either of the two parents which is dominance or was in between which is incomplete dominance but in the case of codominance the f1 generation resembles both parents a good example is different types of red blood cells that determine abo blood grouping in human beings abo blood groups are controlled by the gene capital i The plasma membrane of the red blood cells has sugar polymers that protrude from its surface and the kind of sugar is controlled by the gene. The gene capital I has three alleles IA, IB and small i. The alleles IA and IB produce a slightly different form of the sugar while allele small i does not produce any sugar. Because humans are diploid organisms each person possesses any two of the three I gene alleles. IA and IB are completely dominant over small i. In other words when IA and small i are present only IA expresses because small i does not produce any sugar and when IB and small i are present IB expresses but when IA and IB are present together they both expresses their own types of sugars this is because of codominance hence red blood cells have both capital A and capital B type of sugars since there are three different alleles there are six different combinations of these three alleles that are possible and therefore a total of six different genotype of a human abo blood types which is given in figure 5.2 how many phenotypes are possible 
Do you realize that the example of ABO blood grouping also provides a good example of multiple alleles? Here you can see that there are more than two that is three alleles governing the same character since in an individual only two alleles can be present. Multiple alleles can be found only when population studies are made. Occasionally a single gene product may produce more than one effect. For example, star synthesis in PSID is controlled by one gene. It has two alleles, capital B and small b. Starch is synthesized effectively by capital B, capital B, homozygotes and therefore large starch grains are produced. In contrast, small b, small b homozygotes have lesser efficiency in star synthesis and produce smaller starch grains. After maturation of the seeds, capital B, capital B seeds are round and the small b, small b seeds are wrinkled. Heterozygotes produce round seeds and so capital B seems to be the dominant allele but the starch grains produced are of intermediate size in capital B small b seeds. So if starch grain size is considered as the phenotype then from this angle the allele so incomplete dominance. Therefore dominance is not an autonomous feature of a gene or the product that it has information for. It depends as much on the gene product and the production of a particular phenotype from this product as it does on the particular phenotype that we choose to examine in case more than one phenotype is influenced by the same gene. 5.3 Inheritance of two genes Mendel also worked with and crossed pea plants that differed in two characters as is seen in the cross between a pea plant that has seeds with yellow color and round shape and one that had seeds of green color and wrinkle shape which is given in figure 5.7. Mendel found that the seeds resulting from the crossing of the parents had yellow colored and round shaped seeds. Here you can tell which of the characters in the pairs yellow or green color and round or wrinkle shape was dominant. Thus yellow color was dominant over green and round shape dominant over wrinkled. These results were identical to those that he got when he made separate monohybrid crosses between yellow and green seeded plants and between round and wrinkled seeded plants. Let us use the genotypic symbols capital Y for dominant yellow seed color and small y for recessive green seed color, capital R for round shaped seeds and small r for wrinkled seed shape. The genotype of the parents can then be written as capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y and small r, small r, small y, small y. The cross between the two plants can be written down as in figure 5.7 showing the genotype of the parent plants. The gametes capital R capital Y and small r small y unite on fertilization to produce the F1 hybrid capital R small r capital Y small y. When Mendel self hybridized the F1 plants he found that 3 fourths of F2 plants had yellow seeds and 1 fourth had green. The yellow and green color segregated in a 3 is to 1 ratio. Round and wrinkle shed shape also segregated in a 3 is to 1 ratio just like in a monohybrid cross. 5.3.1 Law of Independent Assortment In the dihybrid cross which is given in figure 5.7, the phenotypes round yellow, wrinkled yellow, round green and wrinkled green appeared in the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Such a ratio was observed for several pairs of characters that Mendel studied. The ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 can be derived as a combination series of 3 yellow, 1 green, with 3 round is to 1 wrinkled. This derivation can be written as follows. 3 round is to 1 wrinkled, 3 yellow is to 1 green equals to 9 round yellow is to 3 wrinkled yellow is to 3 round green is to 1 wrinkled green. Based upon such observations on dihybrid crosses, which is crosses between plant differing in two traits, Mendel proposed a second set of generalizations that we call Mendel's law of independent assortment. The law states that when two pairs of traits are combined in a hybrid, segregation of one pair of character is independent of the other pair of characters. The Punnett square can be effectively used to understand the independent segregation of the two pairs of genes during meiosis and the production of X and pollen in the F1, capital R, small r, capital Y, small y plant. Consider the segregation of one pair of genes, capital R and small r. 50% of the gametes have the gene capital R and the other 50% have small r. Now besides each gametes having either capital R or small r, it should also have the allele capital Y or small y. The important thing to remember here is that segregation of 50% capital R and 50% small r is independent from the segregation of 
capital Y and 50% small y. Therefore, 50% of small r bearing gametes has capital Y and the other 50% has small y. Similarly, 50% of the capital R bearing gametes has capital Y and the other 50% has small y. Thus, there are four genotypes of gametes which are four types of pollen and four types of eggs. The four types are capital R, capital Y, capital R, small y, small r, capital Y and small r, small y each with a frequency of 25% or 1 by 4th of the total gametes produced. When you write down the four types of egg and pollen on the two sides of Punnett square, it is very easy to derive the composition of the zygote that give rise to the F plants which is given in figure 5.7. Although there are 16 squares, how many different types of genotypes and phenotypes are formed? Note them down in the format given. Can you using the Punnett square data work out the genotypic ratio at the F2 stage and fill in the format given? Is the genotypic ratio also 1? Can you using the Punnett square data work out the genotypic ratio at the F2 stage and fill in the format given? Is the genotypic ratio also 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1? 5.3.2 Chromosomal Theory of Inheritance Mendel published his work on inheritance of characters in 1865 but for several reasons it remained unrecognized till 1900. Firstly, communication was not easy as it is now and in those days and uh, his work could not be widely published. Secondly, his concept of genes which is or of factors in Mendel's words as stable and discrete units that control the expression of traits and of the pair of alleles which did not blend with each other was not accepted by his contemporaries as an explanation for the apparently continuous variation seen in nature. Thirdly, Mendel's approach of using mathematics to explain biological phenomena was totally new and unacceptable to many of the biologists of his time. Finally, though Mendel's work suggested that factors which is genes were discrete units, he could not provide any physical proof for the existence of factors or say what they were made of. In 1900, three scientists, D. Varese, Corens, and Von Tesmark, independently rediscovered Mendel's results on the inheritance of characters. Also, by this time, due to advancement in microscopy that were taking place, scientists were able to carefully observe cell divisions. This led to the discovery of structures in the nucleus that appeared to double and divide just before each cell division. These were called chromosomes colored bodies as they were visualized by staining. By 1902, the chromosome movement during meiosis had been worked out. Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary noted that the behavior of chromosome was parallel to the behavior of genes and used chromosome movement, which is given in figure 5.2, to explain Mendel's law, which is given in table 5.3. Recall that you have studied the behavior of chromosomes during mitosis which is equational division and during meiosis which is reduction division the important things to remember are that chromosome as well as genes occur in pairs the two alleles of a gene pair are located on homologous sites on chromosomes on homes. during anaphase of meiosis 1 the two chromosome pairs can align at the metaphase plate independently of each other which is given in figure 5.9 to understand this, compare the chromosome of four different colors in the left and right columns. In the left column, which is possibility 1, orange and green is segregating together. But in the right hand column, possibility 2, the orange chromosome is segregating with the red chromosome. Sutton and Bowery argued that the pairing and separation of a pair of chromosomes would lead to the segregation of a pair of factors they carried. Sutton united the knowledge of chromosomal segregation with Mendelian principles and call it the chromosomal theory of inheritance. Following this synthesis of idea, experimental verifications of the chromosomal theory of inheritance by Thomas Hunt Morgan and his colleagues lead to discovering the basis for the variation that sexual reproduction produced. Morgan worked with the tiny fruit flies, Drosophila melanogaster, which is given in figure 5.10, which were found very suitable for such studies. They could be grown on simple synthetic medium in the laboratory. They complete their life cycle in about two weeks and a single mating could produce a large number of progeny flies. 
also there was a clear differentiation of the sexes the male and the female flies are easily distinguishable also it has many types of hereditary variations that can be seen with low power microscopes 5.3.3 linkage and recombination morgan carried out several dye hybrid crosses in drosophila to study genes that were sex linked the crosses were similar to the dye hybrid crosses carried out by mendel in peas for example morgan hybridized yellow bordered white eyed females to brown bordered red eyes male and intercross their f1 progeny he observed that the two genes did not segregate independently of each other and the f2 ratio deviated very significantly from the 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio expected when the two genes are independent morgan and his group knew that the genes were located on the x chromosomes given in section 5.4 and show quickly that when the two genes in a dihybrid cross were situated on the same chromosome the proportion of parental gene combinations were much higher than the non parental type morgan attributed this due to the physical association or linkage of the two genes and coined the term linkage to describe this physical association of genes on a chromosome and the term recombination to describe the generation of non parental gene combination which is given in figure 5.11 Morgan and his group also found that even when genes were grouped on the same chromosome some genes were very tightly linked shown very low recombination which is given in figure 5.11 cross a while others were loosely linked showed higher recombinations which is given in figure 5.11 cross b for example he found that the genes white and yellow were very tightly linked and showed only 1.3% recombination while white and miniature wing showed 37.2% recombination his uh, student alfred sturtwin used the frequency of recombination between gene pairs on the same chromosome as a measure of the distance between genes and mapped their position on the chromosome today genetic maps are extensively used as a starting point in the sequencing of whole genomes as was done in the case of the human genome sequencing project described later 5.4 polygenic inheritance mendel studies mainly describe those traits that have distinct alternate forms such as flower color which are either purple or white but if you look around you will find that there are many traits which are not so distinct in their occurrence and are spread across a gradient for example in humans we don't just have tall or short people as two distinct alternatives but a whole range of possible heights such traits are generally controlled by three or more genes and are thus called as polygenic traits besides the involvement of multiple genes polygenic inheritance also take into account the influence of environment human skin color is another classic example for this in a polygenic trait the phenotype reflects the contribution of h allele that is the effect of h allele is additive to understand this better let us assume that three genes capital a capital b capital c controls skin color in humans with the dominant forms capital a capital b and capital c responsible for dark skin color and the recessive forms small a small b and small c for light skin color the genotype with all the dominant alleles capital a capital a capital b capital b uh, capital c capital c will have the darkest skin color and that with all the recessive alleles small a small a small b small b small c small c will have the lightest skin color as expected the genotype with three dominant alleles and three recessive alleles will have an intermediate skin color in this manner the number of each type of alleles in the genotype would determine the darkness or lightness of the skin in an individual 5.5 pleiotropy we have so far seen the effect of a gene on a single phenotype or trait there are however instances where a single gene can exhibit multiple phenotypic expression such a gene is called a pleiotropic gene The underlying mechanism of pleiotropy in most cases is the effect of a gene on metabolic pathways which contribute towards different phenotypes. An example of this is the disease phenylketonuria which occurs in humans. The disease is caused by mutation in the gene that codes for the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase which is a single gene mutation. This manifests itself through phenotypic expression characterized by mental retardation and a reduction in hair and skin pigmentation. 5.6 sex determination the mechanism of sex determination has always been a puzzle before the genesist the initial clue about the genetic or chromosomal mechanism of sex determination can be traced back to some of the experiments carried out in insects in fact the cytological observations made in a number of insects lead to the development of the concept of genetic or chromosomal basis of sex determination hanking 1891 
could trace a specific nuclear structure all through spermatogenesis in a few insects. And it was also observed by him that 50% of the sperm receive this structure after spermatogenesis. Whereas the other 50% sperm did not receive it. Henking gave a name to this structure as the X body, but he could not explain its significance. Further investigations by other scientists lead to the conclusion that the X body of Henking was in fact a chromosome. And that is why it was given the name X chromosome. It was also observed that in a large number of insects, the mechanism of sex determination is of the XO type, that is, all eggs bear an additional X chromosome besides the other chromosomes, which are autosomes. On the other hand, some of the sperms bear the X chromosome, whereas some do not. X fertilized by sperm having an X chromosome become female and those fertilized by sperms that do not have an X chromosome become males. Do you think the number of chromosomes in the male and female are equal? Due to the involvement of the X chromosome in the determination of sex, it was designated to be the sex chromosome and the rest of the chromosomes were named as autosomes. Grasshopper is an example of exo type of sex determination in which the males have only one X chromosome besides the autosomes, whereas females have a pair of X chromosomes. These observations lead to the investigation of a number of species to understand the mechanism of sex determination. In a number of other insects and mammals including man, XY type of sex determination is seen where both male and female have same number of chromosomes. Among the males, an X chromosome is present but its counterpart is distinctly smaller and called the Y chromosome. Female, however, have a pair of X chromosomes. Both males and females bear same number of autosomes, hence the male have autosome plus XY, while the female have autosomes plus XX. In human beings and in uh, Drosophila, the males have one X and one Y chromosome, whereas female have a pair of X chromosomes beside autosomes, which is given in figure 5.12. A, B. In the above description, you have studied about two types of sex determination mechanism, that is XO type and XY type, but in both cases, males produce two different types of gametes, A, either with or without X chromosome, or B, some gametes with X chromosome and some with Y chromosome. Such type of sex determination mechanism is designated to be the example of male heterogamity. In some other organisms, example birds, a different mechanism of sex determination is observed, which is given in figure 5.12c. In this case, the total number of chromosomes is same in both males and females, but two different types of gametes in terms of sex chromosomes are produced by female, that is female heterogamety. In order to have a distinction with the mechanism of sex determination described earlier, the two different sex chromosomes of a female bird has been designated to be the Z and W chromosomes. In these organisms, the females have one Z and one W chromosome, whereas males have a pair of Z chromosomes beside the autosomes. 5.6.1 Sex Determination in Humans It has already been mentioned that the sex determining mechanism in case of humans is XY type. Out of 23 pairs of chromosomes present, 22 pairs are exactly same in both males and females. These are the autosomes. A pair of X chromosomes are present in the female. Whereas the presence of an X and Y chromosome are determinant of the male characteristics. During spermatogenesis among males, two types of gametes are produced. 50% of the total sperm produced carry the X chromosome and the rest 50% has Y chromosome besides the autosomes. Females, however, produce only one type of ovum with an X chromosome. There is an equal probability of fertilization of the ovum with the sperm carrying either X or Y chromosome. In case the ovum fertilizes with a sperm carrying X chromosome, the zygote develops into a female, XX, and the fertilization of ovum with Y chromosome carrying sperm results into a male offspring. Thus, it is evident that it is the genetic makeup of the sperm that determines the sex of the child. It is also evident that in each pregnancy, there is always 50% probability of either a male or a female child. It is unfortunate that in our society, women are blamed for giving birth to female children and have been ostracized and ill-treated because of this false notion. 5.6.2 Sex Determination in Honeybee The sex determination in honeybee is based on the number of sets of chromosomes an individual receives. An offspring formed from the union of a sperm and an egg develops as a female, which is queen or worker, and an unfertilized egg develops as a male, which is drawn by means of parthenogenesis. 
This means that the males have half the number of chromosomes than that of a female. The females are diploid having 32 chromosomes and males are haploid that is having 16 chromosomes. This is called as haplodiploid sex determination system and has special characteristic features such as the male produce sperm by mitosis which is given in figure 5.13. They do not have father and thus cannot have sons but have a grandfather and can have grandsons. How is the sex determination mechanism different in the birds? Is the sperm or the egg responsible for the sex of the chicks? 5.7 Mutation Mutation is a phenomenon which results in alternation of DNA sequences and consequently result in changes in the genotype and the phenotype of an organism. In addition to recombination, mutation is another phenomenon that leads to variation in DNA. As you will learn in chapter 6, one DNA helix runs continuously from one end to the other in each chromatide in a highly supercoiled form. Therefore, loss, which means deletion or gain, which means insertion or duplication of a segment of DNA result in alternation in chromosomes. Since genes are known to be located on chromosomes, alternation in chromosomes result in abnormalities or aberrations. Chromosomal aberrations are commonly observed in cancer cells. In addition to the above, mutation also arises due to change in a single base pair of DNA. This is known as point mutation. A classical example of such a mutation is sickle cell anemia. Deletion and insertion of base pairs of DNA causes frame shift mutations. See chapter 6. The mechanism of mutation is beyond the scope of this discussion at this level. However, there are many chemical and physical factors that induce mutations. These are referred to as mutagens. UV radiation can cause mutations in organisms. It is a mutagen. 5.8 Genetic Disorders 5.8.1 Pedigree Analysis The idea that disorders are inherited has been prevailing in the human society since long. This was based on the inheritability of certain characteristic features in families. After the rediscovery of Mendel's work, the practice of analyzing inheritance pattern of trait in human beings began. Since it is evident that control crosses that can be performed in pea plant or some other organisms are not possible in case of human beings, study of family history about inheritance of a particular trait provides an alternative. Such an analysis of traits in a several of generation of a family is called the pedigree analysis. In the pedigree analysis, the inheritance of a particular trait is represented in the family tree over generations. In human genetics, pedigree study provides a strong tool which is utilized to trace the inheritance of a specific trait, abnormality or disease. Some of the important standard symbols used in the pedigree analysis have been shown in figure 5.13. As you have studied in this chapter, each and every feature in any organism is controlled by one or the other gene located on the DNA present in the chromosome. DNA is the carrier of genetic information. It is hence transmitted from one generation to the other without any change or alternation. However, changes or alternation do take place occasionally. Such an alternation or change in the genetic material is referred to as mutation. A number of disorders in human beings have been found to be associated with the inheritance of changed or altered genes or chromosomes. 5.8.2 Mendelian Disorders Broadly, genetic disorders may be grouped into two categories, Mendelian disorder and chromosomal disorders. Mendelian disorders are mainly determined by alternation or mutation in the single gene. These disorders are transmitted to the offspring on the same lines as we have studied in the principle of inheritance. The pattern of inheritance of such Mendelian disorders can be traced in a family by the pedigree analysis. Most common and prevalent Mendelian disorders are hemophilia, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, color blindness, phenylketonuria, thalassemia, etc. It is important to mention here that such Mendelian disorders may be dominant or recessive. By pedigree analysis, one can easily understand whether the trait in question is dominant or recessive. Similarly, the trait may also be linked to the sex chromosome as in case of hemophilia. It is evident that this X-linked recessive trait shows transmission from carrier female to male progeny. A representative pedigree is shown in figure 5.14 for dominant and recessive traits. Discuss with your teacher and design pedigrees for characters linked to both autosomes and sex chromosome. Color blindness. It is a sex-linked recessive disorder due to defect in either red or green cone of eye resulting in failure to discriminate between red and green color. This defect is due to mutation in certain genes present in the X chromosome. It occurs in about 8% of male and only 0.4% of females. This is because the genes that lead to red green color blindness are on the X chromosome. Males have only one X chromosome and females have two. The son of a woman who carries 
द जीन हैज अ फिफ्टी परसेंट चांस ऑफ बींग कलर ब्लाइंड द मदर इज नॉट हर सेल्फ कलर ब्लाइंड बिकॉज द जीन इज रेसेसिव दैट मीन्स दैट इट्स इफेक्ट इज सप्रेस्ड बाई हर मैचिंग डोमिनेट नॉर्मल जीन अ डाउटर विल नॉट नॉर्मली बी कलर ब्लाइंड अनलेस हर मदर इज अ कैरियर एंड हर फादर इज कलर ब्लाइंड hemophilia the sex linked recessive disease which shows its transmission from unaffected carrier female to some of the male progeny has been widely studied in this disease a single protein that is a part of the cascade of proteins involved in the clotting of blood is affected due to this in an affected individual a simple cut will result in non stop bleeding the heterozygous female which means carrier for hemophilia may transmit the disease to sons the possibility of a female becoming a hemophilic is extremely rare because mother of such a female has to be at least carrier and the father should be hemophilic which means unviable in the latter stage of life the family pedigree of queen victoria shows a number of hemophilic descendants as she was a carrier of the disease please see page 289 sickle cell anemia this is an autosome linked recessive trait that can be transmitted from parents to the offspring when both the partners are carrier for the gene or heterozygous the disease is controlled by a single pair of allele hba and hbs out of the three possible genotypes only homozygous individual for hbs which means hbs hbs show the diseased phenotype heterozygous hba hbs individuals appear apparently unaffected but they are carrier of the disease as there is 50% probability of transmission of the mutant gene to the progeny thus exhibiting sickle cell trait which is given in figure 5.15 the defect is caused by the substitution of glutamic acid by valine at the sixth position of the beta globin chain of the hemoglobin molecule the substitution of amino acid in the globin protein result due to the single base substitution at the sixth colon of the beta globin gene from gag to gug the mutant hemoglobin molecule undergoes polymerization under low oxygen tension causing the change in the shape of the rbc from biconcave disc to elongated sickle like structure which is given in figure 5.15 phenyl catenuria This inborn error of metabolism is also inherited as the autosomal recessive trait. The affected individual lacks an enzyme that converts the amino acid phenylalanine into tyrosine. As a result of this, phenylalanine is accumulated and converted into phenylpyruvic acid and other derivatives. Accumulation of these in brain results in mental retardation. These are also excreted through urine because of its poor absorption by kidney. Thalassemia this is also an autosome linked recessive blood disease transmitted from parents to the offspring when both the partners are unaffected carrier for the gene or heterozygous the defect could be due to either mutation or deletion which ultimately results in reduced rate of synthesis of one of the globulin chains alpha and beta chains that make up hemoglobin this causes the formation of abnormal hemoglobin molecule resulting into anemia which is characteristic of the disease Thalassemia can be classified according to which chain of the hemoglobin molecule is affected. In alpha thalassemia, production of alpha globulin chain is affected, while in beta thalassemia, production of beta globulin chain is affected. Alpha thalassemia is controlled by two closely linked genes, HBA1 and HBA2, on chromosome 16 of each parent, and it is observed due to mutation or deletion of one or more of the four genes. The more genes affected, the less alpha globulin molecules produced. while beta thalassemia is controlled by a single gene hbv on chromosome 11 of each parent and occur due to mutation of one or both the genes thalassemia differs from sickle cell anemia in that the former is a quantitative problem of synthesizing to few globulin molecules while the latter is a qualitative problem of synthesizing an incorrectly functioning globulin 5.8.3 chromosomal disorders the chromosomal disorders on the other hand are caused due to absence or excess or abnormal arrangement of one or more chromosomes failure of segregation of chromatids during cell division cycle results in the gain or loss of a chromosome called aneuploidy for example down syndrome result in the gain of extra copy of chromosome 21 similarly turner syndrome result due to loss of an x chromosome in human females Failure of cytokinesis after telophase stage of cell division result in an increase in a whole set of chromosomes in an organism and this phenomenon is known as polyploidy. This condition is often seen in plants. The total number of chromosomes in a normal human cell is 46 which is 23 pairs. Out of these 22 pairs are autosomes and one pair of chromosomes are sex chromosomes. Sometimes though rarely either an additional copy of a chromosome may be included in an individual or an
individual may lack one of any one pair of chromosomes. These situations are known as trisomy or monosomy of a chromosome respectively. Such a situation lead to very serious consequences in the individual. Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, Klinefelter syndrome are common examples of chromosomal disorders. Down syndrome, the cause of this genetic disorder is the presence of an additional copy of the chromosome number 21, which is trisomy of 21. This disorder was first described by Langdon Down. 1866. The affected individual is short, statured, with small round head, furrowed tongue, and partially open mouth, which is given in figure 5.16. Palm is broad with characteristic palm creases. Physical, psychomotor, and mental development is retarded. Klinefelter syndrome. This genetic disorder is also caused due to the presence of an additional copy of X chromosome, resulting into a karyotype of 47 XXY. Such an individual has overall masculine development. However, the feminine development, which is development of breeze, that is gynecomastia, is also expressed, which is given in figure 5.17a. Such individuals are sterile. Turner syndrome. Such a disorder is caused due to the absence of one of the X chromosome, that is 45 with XO. Such females are sterile as ovaries are rudimentary besides other features, including lack of other secondary sexual characters which is given in figure 5.17b. Summary Genetics is a branch of biology which deals with principles of inheritance and its practices. Progeny resembling the parents in morphological and physiological features has attracted the attention of many biologists. Mendel was the first to study this phenomenon systematically. While studying the pattern of inheritance in a pea plant of contrasting characters, Mendel proposed the principle of inheritance, which are today referred to as Mendel's law of inheritance. He proposed that the factors, later named as genes, regulating the characters are found in pairs known as alleles. He observed that the expression of the character in the offspring follow a definite pattern in different first generation F1, second F2 and so on. Some characters are dominant over others. The dominant characters are expressed when factors are in heterozygous condition, which is law of dominance. The recessive characters are only expressed in homozygous condition. The character never blend in heterozygous condition. A recessive character that was not expressed in heterozygous condition may be expressed again when it becomes homozygous. Hence, characters segregate while formation of gametes, which is law of segregation. Not all characters show true dominance. Some characters show incomplete and some show co-dominance. When Mandel studied the inheritance of two characters together, it was found that the factors independently assort and combine in all permutations and combinations, which is law of independent assortment. Different combinations of gametes are theoretically represented in a square tabular form known as Punnett square. The factors, which now known as gene, on chromosomes regulating the characters are called the genotype and the physical expression of the character is called phenotype. After knowing that the genes are located on the chromosomes, a good correlation was drawn between Mendel's laws, segregation and assortment of chromosomes during meiosis. The Mendel's law were extended in the form of chromosomal theory of inheritance. Later, it was found that Mendel's law of independent assortment does not hold true for genes that were located on the same chromosomes. These genes were called as linked genes, closely located genes assorted together and distinctly located genes due to the combination assorted independently. Linkage maps therefore correspond to arrangement of genes on a chromosome. Many genes were linked to sexes also and called as sex-linked genes. The two sexes, which is male and female, were found to have a set of chromosomes which were common and another set which was different. The chromosomes which were different in two sexes were named as sex chromosomes. The remaining set was named as autosomes. In humans, a normal female has 22 pairs of autosomes and a pair of sex chromosome, capital X, capital X. A male has 22 pairs of chromosomes and a pair of sex chromosome as capital X, capital Y. In chicken, sex chromosome in male are capital Z, capital Z and in females are capital Z, capital W. Mutation is defined as change in the genetic material. A point mutation is a change of a single base pair in DNA. Sickle cell anemia is caused due to change of one base in the gene coding for beta chain of hemoglobin. Inheritable mutation can be started by generating a pedigree of a family. Some mutations involve changes in the whole set of 
chromosomes which is polyploidy or change in a subset of chromosome number which is aneuploidy this helped in understanding the mutational basis of genetic disorders down syndrome is due to trisomy of chromosome 21 where there is an extra copy of chromosome 21 and consequently the total number of chromosomes become 47 in turner syndrome one x chromosome is missing and the sixth chromosome is as x not and in Kelfenter syndrome the condition is capital x capital x capital y these can be easily studied by analyzing of karyotypes.